The ocean covers 70% of our planet and is the single largest habitat on Earth. It is home to vast amounts of life in conditions ranging from extreme to commonplace. Despite its vast reaches, little is known about the marine environment when compared to the terrestrial one in which we spend most of our time. For these reasons, as well as the fact that our presence in the ocean increases by the day, understanding how the ocean works is becoming more and more important. Scientists at the University of Victoria realized this fact in 2000 and decided to do something about it. They wanted to remove some of the limitations of battery-powered instruments, provide an ability to interact with deployed instruments, and gain a more permanent presence on the ocean floor. The solution was Venus. Venus stands for the Victoria Experimental Network Under the Sea and was the world's first complex fiber optic cabled undersea observatory. It's been uh, eight years now since that first time that the scientists got together and they basically gave us the mandate to come out here and start designing things to put into the ocean to uh, be able to serve their science. The Venus Array consists of a shore station connected to a series of nodes via a powered fiber optic cable. The nodes serve as a hub for power distribution and provide the communication path between the scientists and their instruments. The node is then connected by more cables to various platforms on the ocean floor. These platforms include oceanographic instrument packages, underwater cameras, hydrophones, and many other sensors. All of the data gathered from these platforms is made available to anyone anywhere in the world via the Venus Data Portal at www.venus.uvic.ca. After much planning, the first Venus cable was laid in February 2006. The cable was laid in Saanich Inlet, off the coast of British Columbia, Canada. Three kilometers of fiber optic cable and a single node were deployed, followed by two instrument platforms. The Venus instrument platform, or VIP, is used to host the majority of the oceanographic instruments on the observatory. The heart of the platform is the Scientific Instrument Interface Module, or SIM, which allows multiple instruments to be connected to a single port on the node. This customizable platform can support almost any instrument, and researchers from across the globe can have their instruments attached to the platform and then sent to the bottom of the ocean. Sensors range from basic measurements of temperature and pressure to ocean currents and turbidity. The most common instrument on the VIP is called a CTD, which measures the conductivity, temperature, and pressure. A common upgrade for a CTD is an optode, which measures the amount of dissolved oxygen in the water. This is especially important in Saanich Inlet, as Saanich Inlet develops bottom water anoxia, leading to the growth of bacterial mats on the seafloor. Researchers can use data from this optode to help unravel the physiology and adaptions of creatures that can survive in these low oxygen waters and those who cannot. Another instrument on the VIP is a zooplankton acoustic profiler, or ZAP. The ZAP uses pulses of sound to map the abundance and location of zooplankton. Zooplankton vary in size from jellyfish all the way down to microscopic copepods. Using the ZAP, scientists have been able to map the daily migrations of zooplankton, who rise to the surface at night to feed and then swim back down to the safety of the depths during the day. The VIP is not the only platform deployed on the Venus project. Venus also hosts specialized camera platforms. The tripod carries a digital still camera, 
um, which can rotate and take images of the bottom once it's placed down there by ROV. Um, it is on a long cable, so it actually leaves this structure that it rests in uh, and ends up being deployed about 45 meters away from that. What they will see and what they will hear is probably uh, the most exciting or enticing thing uh, to uh, the average person. Far from the average person, Gail Anderson has used the Venus camera for a very unique purpose. Well, this is a phenomenal opportunity to find out what happens to a carcass. And of course, we're mimicking a human body by doing this in the ocean. So what happens when somebody dumps a homicide victim in the ocean? In the water, the body can be preserved for years if it goes very deep, very cold, and there aren't many scavengers. Or if the scavenger's there, the body can be pretty much eliminated in a very short period of time. Gale uses pigs because they decay in a similar fashion to human bodies. She has deployed three pigs to try and determine what bodies look like after spending time in the ocean. One of the unique features of Venus is that data collected by researchers is available to anyone. Anyone can log onto the Venus website, visit the multimedia galleries, and browse Gale's pictures for themselves. In 2007, the installation of the second Venus array began. Laying the main backbone cables 10 months earlier, the first Strait of Georgia node was deployed in February 2008 off Vancouver, British Columbia. The Strait of Georgia array was completed in September 2008, with the deployment of the second and final node in 300 meters of water. One of the instruments deployed on both arrays is a hydrophone array. Hydrophones are underwater microphones used to listen to sounds in the ocean. One major area of study is the effect of boat traffic and engine noise on marine mammals. Concerns are being raised over the effects that humans are having on the killer whale populations of British Columbia. In 2008, an instrument called the SLIP was deployed on the Venus project in the Strait of Georgia. The SLIP is the first instrument of its kind in the world and was literally rammed into the bottom to allow sensitive underground measurements of the sediments on the seafloor. For about 30 or 40 years, Natural Resources Canada has been trying to understand what causes the slope instabilities on the Fraser Delta. Uh, in the past, this was done with instruments that are battery powered. Uh, the Venus network now provides us the capability to plug in our instruments to, uh, to a, a power source that is continuous and uh, reliable. In the past, uh, when these, uh, these battery powered instruments often uh, ran out of battery power just as just weeks or, or months before a, fa a large failure occurred. So, now with this new power source, we can uh, have a much more reliable measurements of uh, the failures on the Fraser Delta. The Venus project has also enabled new projects, such as the Ocean Technology Testbed, run by the Faculty of Engineering at the University of Victoria. The OTTB will be used to test instruments, tethered and autonomous submersibles, as well as other emerging subsea technology. Since the first data arrived in February 2006, Venus has deployed over 30 instruments and collected terabytes of data. Over 25 publications have been based on the data received from Venus, and researchers as far away as Israel have used our data. Venus is opening the door for ocean research worldwide and paving the way for new innovative technologies in oceanography, geology, biology, and engineering. 
Venus has already been collecting data for three years and will continue to amass a data set that will become more and more useful as time goes on. The Venus Project truly is bringing the oceans to the world, online, real time, anytime. Dive into our website at www.venus.uvic.ca.